Welcome back. As the days cool down and we gear up for cozy nights in, our next guest is about to share a dish that will spice up our lives. Oh, I can't wait for this. It is called Army Base Stew, and it is the most popular hot pot dish in Korea. Here to show us how to make it is one of our favorite chefs ever, Sang Kim. Welcome back, Sang. Hi, Sang. Hi, ladies. How are you? We're Look doing you great. Look. Great to see you. you. Look great. Thank you, you, thank you. We want to dive into this segment because you are calling this the first Korean-American fusion dish ever made. What's the backstory? Okay, so I was, I'm probably wrong, but the backstory is very simple. Look, you know what? What you have is uh, the American presence in Korea during the Korean War, and then, of course, readily available American products that uh, Koreans decided that they were going to throw into their classic dishes as a way of incorporating what they really needed at the time of war, which was, of course, meats and things like that. Mm. Well, I mean, yeah. as you mentioned, that's why these ingredients don't quite look like what we would traditionally see in a stew. So what do we need to make this dish? Okay, well, first of all, what you need is your staple um, seasoning uh, paste, which I already put in to your broths for you, so you'll see it in your pots. And then, of course, there's some uh, remaining extra that's in your kettles, and that's to intensify or dilute as much as you'd like uh, the, the, the broth. But, you know, the seasoning paste, uh, ladies, is made out of something very, very classic, and that's, of course, uh, gochujang, which is a fermented... Um, uh, chili paste. There's gochugaru, which is dried chili pepper flakes. And then, of course, you can't have anything Korean without kimchi. And so there's mm -hmm. ripened kimchi inside it as well with some garlic and mirin and things like that. It ends up looking like this kind of thing, which is pretty um, yeah. un unseemly looking, but it tastes <laughs> delicious. And it goes into your broth. Now, with Mel, you have uh, the classic Korean mild anchovy broth. Thank you for that. And of course, Lainey, what you have is a broth that could use uh, chicken stock, but because my seasoning is so intense, water is best, and that's what I'm also using as well. So you okay. were saying, um, saying that this is traditionally a meat dish or meaty dish, but if you're a vegetarian or a pescatarian like me, what can we replace that with? Okay, well, you know what? Koreans love fish sausage the way Americans love hot dogs. And so hot dogs is a component of the um, non-pescatarian, non-vegetarian, which Laney's got. Yours has got a lot of fish sausage. There's a couple of things in there as well that's, that's a blend of fish sausage and uh, fake meat. Um, and those things that look like giant uh, meatballs mm -hmm. are actually fish sausages cooked. You'll love it. Mm. Okay, let's get cooking. So you've uh, modified for Mel, and for you know most the the most of the time when we find it in Korea, it has like spam, right? And that's what we're seeing mm. here in front of me. So let's mm. get started. Uh, we have everything simmering. What do we mm -hmm. add to the pot? Okay, so the first thing you want to put into the broth is some of the more ro robust um, ingredients. Like, for example, you mentioned Spam. Let's put some of the Spam in there, right? That mystery meat that everybody loves. Okay. <laughs> um, so we'll throw some of that in there. We want to throw some of these Vienna sausages, okay, in okay. there. Again, these are classic proteins that Koreans during the war really wanted to have instead of, for example, money, because money wasn't going to do anything for them. Mm. So that, uh, uh, Mel, let's have you put some tofu in because sure that's thing. nice and hearty as well. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Sorry, I'm a put... pot clanger when I cook. <laughs> okay, that's tofu fine. in. Wait, should I be tofu pouring in. my broth in here, though? It all depends, Lainey, on how intense you want the uh, the broth oh, to taste. Oh, super intense. Right? Super intense. Okay, so, yeah. so then you probably don't want to put much in. Okay, okay? got it. And then, we'll, and then you also have, of course, let's put some onions and some uh, zucchini in there. Yeah, onions because and zucchini. Because that takes a little time to, to cook. Okay, onions and zucchini. Onions and zucchini, let's throw that in there. Nice. Okay. And what I like to do is I like to just kind of I don't know if you can Please see it on screen. My hands are my hands are burning. Um, <laughs> always be sure never to wear um, oven mitts and always wear white when you're dealing with red sauce stews. <laughs> always. Oh, that's hilarious. 
Okay. Okay, some zucchini. Yeah. Got in there. Yep. Let's let's throw the mushrooms in there as well. Mushrooms, okay? yes. Mushrooms. That's my All new right. food these days. My faves. These are the best. Okay. Now, what I like to do is turn up the heat. Right, it is simmering right now, and of course, you're going to need to put the instant ramen. There was not only uh, American processed foods, but there's also Japanese instant ramen that was used as well. Okay. okay. So, tuck that somewhere in the middle. Yeah. We break it first, or just drop it like a block. You no, you can you can break it if you want. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Right. Turn up the heat. Okay. Okay. Mine is a bit to slow reason. to get hot. Yeah. So, same with that's mine. But, fine. But we're going through. But that's it. fine. We're going through the steps. Woo! Yeah. I'm having a ramen party over here. I was going to tell you not to break it up. Really? Yes. Too late. There it is. You want the long piece anyway. Yeah, I know. I left a couple long pieces. That's good luck. Okay. Um, saying, I understand you have a personal connection also to this recipe. Can you share that story? You know what, Mel, the story is quite a recent one. Uh, you know, as a Korean, we all have personal stories tied to Pudetjiga and and, uh, and the Korean War, still even to this day. Our parents' generation suffered a great deal during it. Um, and I, I met somebody while shooting an episode of a show a couple of weeks ago. Her name is Hu Jong Kennedy, and she's uh, this remarkable, she's legendary. And what she does is she's been fighting her whole life here in this country, advocating on behalf of... Uh, veterans, Canadian vets that fought in the in the Korean War, and I was incredibly moved by her story. She grew up on an army base, an American army base, because her father was a soldier, and so the very first times that this fusion dish came together, she had actually was tasting it with her mom and her, and her dad, and she came to Canada. Married an, uh, a Canadian war vet who fought in the Korean War, who had never tasted pudetjige before. And so for the very first time, there we were in Hamilton, right, out, right outside the HMCS uh, hide up ship. And I cooked for them the pudetjige. And he tasted it for the first time. He was a little bit shocked by how spicy it, it was, but he <laughs> loved it. He loved it, of course. And, he, and I was so moved. Do you know what, ladies? I had never said to a Canadian war vet, thank you so much for your service. But, wow. but the thought of this man going across the uh, world at the age of 18 to fight for complete strangers was an incredibly powerful, powerful moment for me. And so the Pudetjige takes on a whole uh, new significance as a result. That's amazing. You know what? That is such a great story, and that mean, I mean, it's food is more than just food, and that's why this is going to taste even more tasty uh, when we get to mm -hmm. sample it. So we're coming up to the fun part. We're going to add rice cakes and cheese. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Uh, the thing about rice cakes is you know that this is also a staple. We just came through Chuseok, which is Korean Thanksgiving, and we eat a lot of rice cake, right? So rice cake is a is a standard. So we can just put that in there as well. As for cheese, Lainey, I don't know if you're lactose intolerant like I am. I am not. But you're not. Nope. That's wonderful, but people don't like stand me standing by the cheese table and eating too much of it, because I am. But I love cheese. And so what? American sliced cheese, folks, right? So once you got everything all going, so mine is, uh, mine is going really, really well. Put the cheese on it and let it melt and let it get all nice and gooey inside. Yeah. That's what you want. So okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a taste because we're coming up to the end. So I'm gonna just throw my cheese on and then we're gonna have a little taste. Um, because like, you know, I feel like we've worked so hard for this. So put that one in. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna have a quick, quick, okay. quick taste. Yes, it's time for a taste. I mean, this is uh, the melange of all these flavors is so, I mean, I know some people might be put oh, off yeah. by the cheese, but the melange of the flavors yes. is amazing. Saying this it? is phenomenal. This is an entire meal, probably our lunch today. So on all fronts saying, thank you so, so much for bringing us this dish. And as always, your amazing stories that go along with it. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. And for everybody watching, Annyeong. that's you, Mom. The full recipe for this is going to be on our social media channels right after the show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.